Hi, this is Pastor Joel with Right Response Ministries, and you're listening to another episode of our show called Questions. Today's question is this, should women be deacons? Should women be deacons? To flesh the question out a bit more, every Reformed church seems to hold that only men should be elders. However, these same churches seem divided on the question of whether or not women can be deacons. So, does the Bible allow for female deacons or not? Great question. The answer is the Bible does not allow for female deacons. All right. Westminster Confession of Faith, no female deacons. 1689 Reformed Baptist Confession of Faith, no deacons. More importantly, both of those confessions of faith get that from the Word of God. Let me just read this real quick. Okay. So 1 Timothy chapter 3. I'm going to go as quick as possible on this episode because I don't want to get bogged down. You guys know sometimes I bog myself down. So this is qualifications for deacons, picking up in verse 8. 1 Timothy 3, verse 8. Deacons likewise must be dignified, not double-tongued, not addicted to much wine, not greedy for dishonest gain. They must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience and let them also be tested first. Then let them serve as deacons if they prove themselves blameless. Their wives... This is where the contention is. Their wives, this is verse 11, likewise must be dignified, not slanderers, but sober-minded, faithful in all things. Let deacons each be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their own household well. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that is in Jesus Christ. Okay, here are the counter arguments for the person who's gonna wanna have female deacons. Number one, they're going to say, well, the word wives can be translated as women. Right? That Greek word, it can be translated wives or women. So what you could have is, you know, 1 Timothy 3 verses 1 through 7 is qualifications for elders, and that's clearly male, male men. Um, and then instead of two lists of qualifications, you know, for uh, male elders and then male deacons, you really have three lists of qualifications for male elders, then a list for male deacons, and then instead of reading it, their wives... The wives of male deacons should be like this. It's female deacons. Women who are deacons should be like this. So you really have three lists. You have male elders, male deacons, and then a third list for female deacons. Now, here's the problem. Number one, I don't believe in affirmative action. (laughs) To say it, you know, as simply as possible. I don't believe in affirmative action. What I mean is this. A deacon is a deacon is a deacon. And you must be this tall to ride the ride. Do you qualify or do you not? And here's the thing. If this is a list for not the wives of male deacons, but it's a list for female deacons, you might notice that the qualifications for the wives of deacons, if we're reading it as women deacons, female deacons, it's a different list. It's a different list than the qualifications for male deacons. So if you do read wives as women, women deacons, then you have to say there are two different lists of qualifications, one list for male deacons and another list for female deacons, which makes it seem as though there's a different bar for women who are trying to be a deacon than men who are trying to be a deacon. And I would argue it looks as though the bar is being lowered for women, if you read it that way, who are trying to be deacons than men who are trying to be deacons. Right? It's almost kind of like a, like a Matt Chandler kind of thing, right? When he said, you know, if, if I got an eight, you know, for pastoral candidates, you know, I got an eight, you know, a, a white guy and I've got a seven black guy, I'll take the seven black guy. But if I got a six, you know, that's too low and that'll, you know, that'll just promote the kind of uh, tokenism that, that we don't want to support. So, right, and he got a lot of flack for that and rightly so. That was a, a very foolish thing to say. Um, but that's exactly what would be going on here, right? So, you, you know, if you want to be a male deacon, you must be this tall to ride the ride. If you want to be a female deacon, well, there, there's a different list with a little lighter qualifications. It's a different bar. It's a little lower, a.k.a. it's, a, it's affirmative action. So all that being said, I don't believe that. Um, I think it's wives. It's the wives of deacons. Now, here's another counter. People say, well, if it's the wives of deacons, then that seems weird because isn't the role of elder, a higher ecclesiastical office than the role of deacon. And, and if it's wives of deacons, then why are there requirements given for the wife of a deacon when there are not any requirements given for the wife of an elder? It seems like, like there's more in that case being required of a deacon um, than there is an elder. And isn't deacon 
ultimately a lower role in the church than elder? Wouldn't you think that the qualifications for an elder would be higher than a deacon? Meaning that if, if the Bible expects something of the wives of deacons, then certainly it should expect that same thing, if not even more, from the wives of elders. And yet we have nothing for the wives of elders, and yet we have something for the wives of deacons. Well, here would be my counter to that counter. I would say, as I've studied this text and, and the Bible as a whole, multiple other texts, um, I would say that, that a wife joins her husband who is a deacon in his ministry, in the diaconate ministry, in a unique way that the wife of an elder does not join her husband in his elder ministry. An elder, one of his predominant things is to preach the word. You know, and people look at, you know, 1 Peter 5, right? Where it says, you know, Peter says, I charge you as a fellow elder, I charge the elders among you, shepherd the flock of God. Um, and we always say, right, we, we, what we do is we actually divorce preaching from shepherding. That's a, you may not even notice that you do that. You probably do that. What you've probably been taught and subconsciously do is that you think that, that an elder preaches, but he also shepherds. And, and what you don't probably even notice you're doing is, is what you've done is you've truncated the shepherding ministry of an elder to, um, well, pretty much exclusively to interpersonal counseling. It's, it's in between the Lord's Day. It's Monday through Saturday, going into homes, right? Personal pastoral visits, uh, catechizing, uh, marriage counseling, th those kinds of things. Whereas I would say, no, there's just, there's just shepherding. What an elder does is he shepherds. And, and preaching on the Lord's day is absolutely a part of faithful shepherding. In fact, I would say it's the biggest part. When, when a, a pastor faithfully preaches the word of God on the Lord's day and the saints, the sheep are gathered together, he is feeding them nourishing them. And when he rightly administers the sacrament of baptism or Lord's Supper, he is feeding and nourishing and shepherding them. And one of the ways that he protects them from wolves is in his preaching, not just interpersonal counseling, uh, not just um, you know, behind the scenes with a guy who's peddling you know, heresy, um, but one of the ways that he protects the sheep, he, he nourishes them, he feeds them, and he even protects them he protects them from threats and from wolves and false teachers is in the pulpit. The way that he cries out against heresy and heretics and even names them in the pulpit. In all these ways, he is feeding the sheep. He's also bringing conviction from the word of God to the sheep. So he, he's using his staff, right, to, to prod them a little bit when they're, when they're off the path, when they're going the wrong direction, he's, or his rod, I should say. And then he's using his staff to, to whack those wolves by crying out against heresy and heretics and all that. And he's doing all of that in his preaching. So it's not like a, a pastor preaches and then he shepherds. No, a pastor shepherds, and in his shepherding, he shepherds through preaching, and through sacrament, through word and sacrament. And that's the chief portion of his shepherding. And then he continues to shepherd after the Lord's Day all week long in other formats such as interpersonal counseling. And he also shepherds the sheep by ruling, the elders who rule well. That's another way that he is shepherding and protecting and, and ensuring the benefit and the protection and the nourishment of the sheep is even in the way that he renders righteous decisions with the other elders, a plurality of elders, and the way that he rules. And all these ways he's shepherding the sheep. So whether it's 1 Peter 5 or whether it's you know, 1 Timothy 3 or Titus 1, you know, these kinds of things, um, an elder, his ministry is shepherding. And the chief way that he shepherds the sheep is preaching. And women don't preach. <laughs> Sorry, Beth Moore. <laughs> you should go home and pack lunches for, for your husband. There's some other things that you're called to also, but... Packing lunches for your husband wouldn't be a bad start. So, yeah, women don't preach. They don't. They don't preach on the Lord's Day to the gathered saints. They don't teach or exercise authority over men. But what a deacon does in his ministry, the ministry of the diaconate, in, in serving many of the practical needs of the church body, including the orphans and the widows, his wife actually can help him in that. Because there's not a clear biblical prohibition on caring for the poor, for instance. So I think the reason why there are 
qualifications given for the wife of a deacon when there are not qualifications given for the wife of an elder is not to say that the bar for being a deacon is higher than the bar for being an elder by virtue of the fact that the wives of deacons are expected to do such and such, but the wives of elders you know, don't have to do anything. No. No, I think that the reason why the apostle speaks to wives in the case of deacons is because of the nature of what a deacon does is more inclusive and I think the apostle assumes it will include the deacon's wife. She won't hold the title. She won't be in the office. She won't do all of the things that a deacon does, but she will be able to join her husband in his deacon work in a much higher capacity than the wife of an elder will be able to join her husband in his work because his work predominantly is preaching, and that is precisely forbidden to women. So, there's my counter to the counter to the counter. All right, all that being said, Acts chapter 6, right? <laughs> the leaders in Jerusalem, they go to the people and they say, choose seven men. Right? We, we just gloss over that, but it's worth noting for a second. Not seven people, not seven men and women and or women, seven men filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. And then we know who were picked. So it's not just they said, we want seven men, but then the congregation goes and chooses these seven men and we get a list of their names and they're all men. Last thing, right? So I think that's, you know, that, that would be a descriptive text, text rather than a prescriptive text like, like Titus 1 and 1 Timothy 3. Um, Acts 6 is a descriptive text, but it still is compelling. It still means something that, that the only, you know, real example that we have of, of deacons being selected in a local church, and it's not just one or two of them, but seven of them and they all happen to be men. I think that says something. Last thing is like, well, what about Phoebe, you know, or what about, you know, um, Junius or they, like they, these individuals, you know, who, you know, the Bible says, you know, she is a deacon, Phoebe, a deacon. Um, well, the way that I would explain that is this. Um, the word deacon in the Greek, it, si it simply means servant. And so the office of deacon, it's still the same word, servant, the office of servant um, is the same word in the Greek as, as the act of being a servant. So there are two different kinds of deacons, is my point. right? You could say so-and-so is an amazing servant, and yet they not, right? You could say that of somebody in your local church and say so-and-so is such a servant, and yet they are not ordained as a deacon in the office of deacon in your church. And then you can say so-and-so is an ordained servant in our church which is the word for deacon, right? So it's just two different kinds of deacons, right? It's two different ways of using the word deacon. It's two different kinds of servant. It's somebody who is a servant in the organic sense of just, that, that every Christian is called to, to serve, right? Uh, to follow in the example of Jesus who did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many, right? That we should love our neighbor as we love ourselves. You know, like Jesus says with the, the disciples, he says, you should follow in this example. And he, you know, he kneels down and washes their feet. He serves, he serves, and we should serve. So all of us, every Christian, by mere virtue of being a Christian, if they're a faithful Christian in any capacity at all, then they are, at some degree or another, a servant. So everyone, in biblical terms, is a deacon. It's just They're just not in the office of a deacon. So every Christian is a servant, and there, then there is the office of, certain, of servant. It's that simple. Right? So Phoebe is a servant, a great servant, but she's not an ordained servant. Selected by the common suffrage of the church with hands laid upon her and ordained to the office of deacon. So she's a servant by nature, by action, by role, um, but she is not a servant by official ecclesiastical title. That's it. So anybody says, well, it means women deacons instead of the wives of deacons. No, it's just, that doesn't hold up. And I gave you all my reasoning. Anybody who says, well, Acts chapter 6, well, Acts chapter 6, they're all men. And anybody who says, well, what about Phoebe and some of these other women, you know, who are referenced as servant? Well, there's just the word deacon, which is the word servant. There's the office of servant. But there are other people who aren't in the ordained office of servant, but who are still servants. 
And we would use that language today. The only reason it's confusing is because <laughs> the word deacon is servant. And so the word is being used in two different capacities. And the feminist and the evangelical church today try to take advantage of that. So anyways, women should not be deacons. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would consider supporting Right Response Ministries, we'd be incredibly grateful. You can do so by going to rightresponseministries.com slash donate to give your gift of any amount. If you're not able to support us financially, that's okay. You can still support us in a great regard simply by subscribing to our YouTube channel, clicking the bell, and of course sharing our content with all your friends and family. We can't do this without you, your support, and your prayers. So thank you.